The life appeared brightly, but this shining star was eclipsed by cruel evil deeds. Deva Moria Oloa was born on June 21, 2000 in Costa Rica, Central America. She and her young sister Mariana, who lives with her parents Alina Oloa and Oscar Mora Lahiri in Barba, Hidia Province, is described by those who knew her well as a beautiful, charismatic, and kind-hearted girl. In their view, Deva was full of joy and always tried her best to share this joy with those around her. Her family noticed that although she was kind and willing to help others, she was unaware of the malicious intentions of others. They I think it was this characteristic that led to her final tragedy. In 2014, when Ava was 13 years old, she met a 19-year-old man, Randall Garrett Javito, at school. At first, they just chatted, but after a few months, they started dating. The baby, as parents were opposed to her relationship at the time, feeling that she was only 13 years old and should focus more on her studies. Although they were opposed to the relationship, they did not prohibit Eva from dating Randall. At the time, he already had a two-year-old daughter from a previous relationship. In 2015, when Eva was 14, she became pregnant. Randall was reportedly intense, jealous, and physically and mentally unstable. Take control of Eva. In 2016, Ava's son Ian was born. Her family recalled that despite her young age, Ava was an exemplary mother and Ian was her whole world. In February 2017, Randall died in Barba. Central drug dealer was arrested by police. He was accused of being the main supplier of illegal substances in the area and was found guilty and required to serve six years in prison. In addition to Randall, his brother and four others were also arrested. Randall is said to have been a troublemaker since he was a teenager, and prior to this drug-related arrest he had been involved in numerous legal issues, even being arrested for robbery and holding a gun on a taxi driver. Seized, Randall's harassment of Ava's friends and family continued even after he was jailed, with family members warning Ava that Randall was not a good person and being with him could jeopardize her future. Ava's father Oscar, who affectionately referred to her as the Glorious Princess in an interview, explained that despite many well-intentioned warnings, Ava chose to follow her heart. Ava is no stranger to Randall's criminal lifestyle. After Randall was in prison for several months, she made a decision that she would end the relationship and raise her son alone. Despite being in prison, Randall said he would do his best to shoulder the burden. A father's responsibility is to take care of Ian. In Randall's heart, even if Ava no longer wants to have anything to do with him, Randall still hopes to keep in touch with Ava. He uses the child as an excuse and still often calls him the brother goes to visit Ava and hopes to rekindle their old love after being released from prison. The brother begins to monitor Ava's every move. Randall demands to know everything about Ava's actions. Despite Ava's explicit request to cut ties with him, Randall's brother keeps a close eye on Ava whenever he can, and then passing the information gathered to his brother in prison, Randall soon learned that Ava had begun a new relationship. Randall became angry and, despite his arrest, began to make threats against Ava and her family. So Ava requested a protection order from the court and sought help from the National Women's Protection Institute of Costa Rica. Even though Randall is in jail, he has people out there who could harm her and her family. Around the same time, Ava entered a new relationship that also had problems. And a few months later Ava had to file for a protective order again, this time against her new boyfriend. After two troubled relationships, Ava felt the need to warn other women going through similar experiences. She became involved in feminism and social causes. Ava became more active on her social media accounts, often posting about it and how she could help those in need. She also began attending protests and advocating for the causes she championed. In 2018, Ava decided to pursue a degree in social work at the Latin University of Costa Rica. He claimed that his goal in life was to help those women. In May 2019, despite serving only three years in prison, Randall was released for good behavior and was placed on probation for the remaining three years. Shortly after his release, Randall found Ava and planned to meet his son, but his real purpose was to regain his old love with Ava. 
and Ava made the decision that she didn't want to have any contact with Randall. However, out of fear that Randall might harass the family, she eventually gave in and allowed Randall to reconnect with their son, Ian. They agreed that Ava would occasionally take the kids to Randall's house, and that she would stay there in the meantime because she didn't trust Randall, and everyone knew that since Randall's true goal was to get back with Ava. Gathering, so he used this period to try to convince Ava, but Ava has been avoiding Randall. This led to numerous arguments, some of which escalated to Randall being physically violent towards Ava. During this time, Randall is said to have even tried to break into Ava's home during the argument and set it on fire. Took away Ava's clothes another time. While Ava was in Randall's car with their son Ian, he kicked Ava out of the car and punched her, all in front of their young son. Ava's friend Sarah Gonzalez mentioned that Ava once confessed to her that she was afraid that Randall would do something terrible to her. Ava had had enough. She knew that she and Randall could not they were raising their children together, so she applied for an injunction against Randall. In the days that followed, Ava sought counseling from a law student friend about domestic violence. She said she planned to file charges against Randall. About a month after Ava applied for an injunction against Randall, she decided to let them meet their children. Ava's friend later said in an interview that whenever Ava went to Randall's house, she would always inform her, but on that day, Ava did not tell her anything. In the afternoon, when she came to Randall's house several neighbors saw her entering Randall's home, along with Ian, Randall's other five-year-old daughter, and his mother. Then, at about 3.30 p.m., Neighbors heard a heated argument between Ava and Randall, followed by the cries of Ian and Randall's daughter. Soon, they heard two gunshots. Randall's mother also heard the gunshots. She rushed into her son's room to see what was going on. When she entered the room, she found Ava lying on the floor. Shot twice in the back, so she called the police and the ambulance, but when the police arrived, Ava had no signs of life and Randall had fled the scene. But soon, Randall was arrested by the police only a few miles away from the crime scene. At the police station, Randall confessed everything. During the investigation, Randall's mother cooperated with police and showed them Randall's hidden murder weapon. Ian, who was only three years old at the time, saw everything. After being sent to the hospital for examination, Ian was handed over to Eva, as mother. Randall's trial begins in February 2022 at Hamia Court. During the trial, prosecutors claimed that Randall locked Ava in a room and shot her twice. The evidence was so solid that the trial lasted only two days before the verdict was reached. Randall Arvido was found guilty of the crimes against Ava Morera and sentenced to 35 years in prison. The maximum penalty in Costa Rica, when he heard the verdict, Randall became furious and began shouting insults at the judge. He was even forcibly taken out of the court by the police before the sentence was pronounced. Randall is currently serving his sentence in prison. As the saying goes, good and evil will be rewarded, not because they are not repaid, but because the time has not come yet. I hope this story can alert the world.